Hello, hello. I have never been on live before, but I wanted to come on and kind of meet with my newest subscribers and see if you guys had any questions that you wanted to ask me. I am new for those of you who have been watching my channel. I appreciate it and sending comments. Um, I really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. I love the feedback. Um, let me clear some of this mess up. <laughs> Because this is very impromptu. I was like, okay, I want to go live and kind of see what this is all about. I'm just here in my home office. I don't even have my earrings on. But, um, yeah, I wanted to see if anyone was going to hop on, if anyone has any questions about IV hydration uh, and becoming a nurse CEO. I plan to soon do a video on kind of my journey to entrepreneurship and how I got started. I think I touched on it a little bit in my videos, but I think it's always important to have – some sort of background or just basically have you see yourself in me because I um, am just a nurse who was happy to get hired in the emergency room and I thought I was set right I thought I could do that for the rest of my life but something was just tugging at me that I wanted more um, I didn't really like the idea of having to beg my employers for time off Hey, Kim, I am just doing a QA and a if anyone has questions about becoming a nurse entrepreneur um, or IV hydration and just talking a little bit about my journey to entrepreneurship. So, yeah, you know, having to ask for time off and vacation, it just got overwhelming. And I, I don't know, something was just tugging at me to do a little bit more. So I kind of drifted off into entrepreneurship. I also, at that time I was getting married and I took about a month off after working countless overtime um, shifts. I took some time off to enjoy my new husband, um, you know, married, honeymoon, all those things. And it just allowed me to decompress and have some time away from the madness that is the hospital and emergency room. And that time away allowed me to think, right? The worst thing they want us to do is to actually have time to think about what we're doing and the stress that we're under. So I kind of just had this idea to start a lotion business or create a lotion and it just took off from there. So I know how important it was for me to find a community of other nurses who were doing the same because at the time I hadn't really heard of nurses starting their own businesses. I, I've heard of, I heard of nurses doing um, like CPR classes and things like that, but just the wide variety of things nurses do and start businesses in just was mind blowing and overwhelming. And to see nurses kill, um, like killing it, making their own schedule, working from wherever, using the knowledge that they had from bedside, uh, using that putting it into businesses, making way more than they made at the hospital and having the freedom to do so. So once I found that community of nurses, it was on from there. I think it's very important. Representation matters, um, not just in this way of being a nurse entrepreneur in, you know, my life just as a black woman, you know, I didn't think that I can get into aesthetics, but finding my medical director who happened to be a black doctor. She was doing it and she said, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, so representation also matters with any, any population, you know, just being nurses, being nurses, having representation of other nurses who branched out and started their own businesses. And you can absolutely do the same. I didn't know the first thing about business, which is why I am also starting my coaching program to help bridge the gap between nurses bedside nurses, uh, nurses who have no experience with business, because it is a bit of a learning curve. I mean, there's a whole like business major, right? In colleges and people study business. So it is a learning curve. And, you know, when you're starting your own business, you can very easily get overwhelmed and you can very, very easily trade the overwhelm, stress and burnout from bedside into your own business. And the last thing you want to do is put all your money and time into this business and basically buy yourself another stressor, right? So there are going to be stressors. I'm not going to say that business is easy. By no means is easy. Um, but you have to pick your heart. You know, hard for me is having to beg for 
time off and having to deal with the politics of the hospital and having to work long hours. I, I don't like 12 hour shifts. I never have. I'm the, I'm the type. And I know most nurses love their 12 hour shifts. I know you get three days and you get four days off, but if I have to be half dead for two of those days, then is it really a full four days off? No, it's not. Um, so I never like 12 hour shifts. I'd work eight hours if I could just to have time off. Like I do, I just realized I don't like working and that's okay. That's okay. That I don't like traditional work of being stuck at the hospital from basically when the sun is coming up to the sun is going down. Um, so that was just me. And that's why I decided to branch off into entrepreneurship because I saw other nurses doing it. And then they allowed me to see that I could do it too. But as I was saying, it is a steep um, learning curve. So I hope to, be that resources for nurses so that when they do figure out what it is that you guys want to do in business, that you don't get burnt out and overwhelmed. Um, you, it's ba you basically just need a toolkit. And once you have, like I said, business is its own heart in its own way, but having the toolkit, um, the resources, same as in the hospital, having those resources, having those people you can call to run things by or having, you know, your nurse friend, hey, what would you do? Would you give this much mess? Would you call the doctor? What would you do? Having those resources in business is worth its weight in gold. So that's all. I just wanted to pop on really quick and see if anyone has any questions on IV hydration or business. Um, you can check out my videos. Thank you to everyone who's been watching. And I'll try to go live more uh, and do more lives to connect here on the YouTube community. I find that this is like my safe space, YouTube. Um, I've tried Instagram, like my business partner. She is amazing on in Instagram. For those who don't follow her, she is um, side nurse, preneur, side preneur nurse, sorry, side preneur underscore nurse. And she kills it on Instagram and the reels. Um, but I find that YouTube and making videos and educating people is kind of my home. So I will be doing lives, going more lives. And um, as I say, if you, yes, Kim, that's an excellent question. So my thoughts and advice on women of color going into aesthetics, predominantly Caucasian areas. I am working um, really hard to help change that, right? I'm just one person. I actually have an interview coming out with uh, MedSpa. Uh, I'm sorry, AmSpa. Um, if you don't know, AmSpa is a huge organization that helps um, med spas with legal everything med spa they do. And I went to a conference and it was clear that they needed diversity, inclusion, things like that. So I will post my interview with him. Um, but the whole point of that interview was that we need to bring change to the aesthetics community, not only with the provider side and getting more providers who look like us, but also to, uh, marketing better to um, people who look like us so that they will get it. As you probably know, Kim, if you're a woman of color, that is still pretty taboo and, um, in our culture to get these services. We are slowly coming around. It takes a lot of education. Um, speaking as a black woman, knowing black women, my mom, et cetera, it takes a lot of education. But once you educate them and show them it's okay, we are okay to get these services too, they usually get them. Um, but as far as us getting into aesthetics, I find that we have to kind of make a, a seat at our own table. So that's why our newest IV hydration class, we're, we're teaching IV hydration and how to get into aesthetics, um, because we're just going to have to go out there and get into it ourselves. You know, it's very hard already to get hired on to a clinic with no experience um, and being a new injector. And then it's triple hard when you don't know if they're going to hire you because of if, you know, we don't fit the patient population that they mostly see, are they going to hire us? So I find that there are ways to get hired into these clinics, but I find that it's just best if you are able to find a medical director that you just make your own lane and you just tackle it yourself. That's what I had to do. And I've been uh, pretty successful at doing that. So those are my thoughts, but I am working with these um, manufacturers and other providers in bringing awareness because they are very unaware that this problem even exists. They, they haven't even thought about it, you know, it doesn't affect them. They don't think about it. So once we bring awareness that, Hey, you aren't hiring us, it's hard for us to get in this field, then maybe things will change. So that, those are my thoughts. I can expand more on that. That's a great video. Um, I could do a video on that and expand more on that. 
um, how we get into aesthetics and my thoughts on the field. Um, so I will do that. All right, guys. Well, I will come back. I'll continue doing more videos. And um, I appreciate you guys for watching and embracing me and commenting and everything. So I hope everyone has a great night and I'll talk to you soon.